Kids are spoiled. My friend's son, I saw him after Christmas. I said, how was your Christmas? Because it was all right. I said, what do you mean all right? You got a nice family. What'd they get you for Christmas? Well, they got me a new smartphone. Well, that's a nice gift. You should be excited. Yeah, it's all right. What do you mean it's all right? I never get a gift that good when I was a kid. Yeah, but it's only 3G. What? It's only 3G. All my friends have a 4G phone. Oh, that's too bad. But you're in luck. I found the missing G. Get over it. Here's some more G's you could use. Why don't you show some gratitude for the generous gift they gave you and be grateful you're not groveling in garbage in a grungy gutter in a ghetto in Guatemala with gonorrhea on your gonads, you greedy grouch. Now grow up. Hello, you're watching Who Are We Him here at WCTV with me, your host, Queen Banda. So today, today is going to be an amazing show. Do you know why? I have Paul D'Angelo. I'm just going to let you that name like sink in. And here is the guy. You are one amazing dude. You are funny. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. I was watching your clips and, and this is me. I'm like, no, 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 don't, don't, no, 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 no. Just short little things here and there, and you just crave for more. We broke up. Uh, we broke up uh, some of my concert footage, and we thrown that? it out. Well, you know what? Um, uh, uh, I, I came out with a, a couple of books in the last two years that won a whole bunch of international awards, and, and I, want, I wanted to uh, reach a bigger audience. Yes. So I hired a publicist out in Los Angeles, and. A lot of money and didn't know much <laughs> progress. I said, well, you know, we're going to build our brand. Mm -hmm. Everybody who, who buys my books, which are all short, funny little stories, are fans of my stand-up. So yes. I said, let's, let's get the stand-up out there. So let's break up some of these concerts mm -hmm. into short little clips, send them out there, and then people say, wow, I like his stand-up. Maybe yeah. I'll read his book. And, and so now, we, in fact, we got a whole bunch of new video clips that are coming out soon. And it's funny how we're all getting older. I went to my class reunion. Girl came up to me, she goes, Paul, do you remember me? I said, I think so. She goes, I heard you're a comedian now, is that true? Is that true, you're a comedian? I said, yeah, it is. She goes, you weren't funny in high school. <laughs> what? You weren't funny in high school. I said, you didn't put out in high school, now you got six kids. Things change, honey. <laughs> what? You are amazing, and the surprisingly thing is that you are an attorney. Yes, I am. People say you used to be an attorney, but it's like an alcoholic. You, <laughs> you're always an attorney. Yeah, yes. I have to go to meetings like Lawyers Absolutely. Anonymous. Absolutely. Yeah. So how, where's the link? Please show me the link between attorney and being a comic. Well, okay. I, uh, I, was, I, uh, I was a finance major in, in, in college because, uh, and then went to law school because I thought I was going to be a corporate lawyer because I didn't know anything about being a lawyer. And then I found out <laughs> that being a corporate lawyer was very boring and tedious. And I didn't want to do that, really? so I said... No, nothing about that word, corporate lawyer? Well, well I just wanted to make my mother proud. <laughs> I got a little Italian mother, you know? She's, uh, she's uh, a little Italian mother that's, that's about f five feet tall, and mm. I'm still f afraid of her. But, <laughs> uh, but uh, well, I'll make my mother proud. I'll be a corporate lawyer. That sounds good. She can yes. tell her friends I'm a corporate lawyer. Oh, I, then I found out, that's horrible. That's, uh, I'll be so bored. <laughs> so um, I said, well, I, I like to be in front of people. I'll be a trial attorney. So mm. I went to work at the district attorney's office. I was an assistant uh, district attorney for 11 years, um, and I used to, I, I, I must have been funny with my friends. I never thought of going on stage in my life, um, but uh, I used to go to see comedy and uh, live comedy, mm -hmm. and my, my father and my uncle, who I grew up with, were very funny men, yes. and, I, and they were big influences of me in comedy, mm -hmm. and I, I inherited their sense of humor. And I knew that I couldn't, you, every, every comic goes through a stage at the beginning where you're terrible, and yeah. I, I couldn't afford to do that because I was such a good lawyer mm. that people would say, what do you, what's wrong with you? Why are you doing this? Yes. So I wrote for a year before I ever got on stage for the first time, and I had done like 100 trials in front of a jury, in mm -hmm. front of a judge. So I wasn't afraid to be in front of people. And um, after a year, I, instead of having five minutes of material, was we, I said, I'm going to have 25 minutes of material before I start. Yes. I went on stage. I loved it so much they had to pull me off the stage. They had to pull me by the <laughs> arm to get off the stage because I loved it. I said, oh, my God, I love this. I love the feedback from the people. I was doing well. I only did 10 or 12 open, what they call open mic yes, nights, yeah. and I quit because my parents were on my back. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Didn't you get that out of your system? We are supposed to be a lawyer. Don't, we're ashamed. We're ashamed you do a comedy. So uh, I quit, but in my head, 
I still had that idea. So I was ready to take a job with a big law firm. And at the last minute, I panicked. And uh, I called up two of the big agents in Boston, who was uh, Barry Katz, who's now the producer of Last Comic Standing, and Mike Clark, who's Lenny Clark's mm -hmm. brother, who's Big Booker. And I lied. I was reading off a list of clubs in New York yes. of where I never played and said, I've been to this place and that place. Can you come and see me? They came to see me. And from that moment on, I was a headliner. Which <laughs> The food's good here. Do, do, do you have the food? The food is wonderful. Oh, which just reminds me. You know what? I, you know what pisses me off? Do you ever go to a restaurant with somebody who's just such a pain in the ass when they order? I had a blind date with this girl. First and last date. We get to the restaurant. The waitress comes over. Can I help you? I says, Yeah, I just want this and that and everything. He looks at her. He goes, Can I get you start you off with a beverage? She goes, Yes. I'd like an iced tea, with the ice on the side, and the tea on the other side, nothing in the middle. <laughs> Shaken, not stirred. Two sweet lows, one equal, half a splendor. Would you like a lemon with that? A small slice of fresh papaya. <laughs> Can I start you off with an appetizer? I would like the alphabet soup, just the vowels. <laughs> and sometimes why? <laughs> How about an entree? I have a question about the entrees. What exactly is in the chicken, broccoli, and ziti? Uh, that would be chicken, broccoli, and ziti. Oh, God, no, 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 I don't want that. Um, I'm just gonna have a steak and a potato, but no steak, hold the potato. What? I said, can I have another meat instead of the steak? Well, we have chicken. Okay, that would be good. And can I substitute for a different vegetable? We have broccoli. Okay, and you get pasta with that. Uh, I'll have the ziti. Okay, that means you want chicken, broccoli, and ziti. No, I told you I don't want that. All right, listen, how about the fish, the fish, the fish of the day? Do you have fish of the day? Yes, we do. Is it fishy? I go, no, it tastes like a chocolate cupcake, you idiot. Just order something. So how, I mean, you seem like you're naturally funny. So how, do you, how does that play in court? Oh, uh, yeah, well, there's a thin line. <laughs> well, the police officer all loves me because I would entertain them during the day, but I did my job. Yes. That was number one. I had my priority. And many times the judge would be banging the gavel, saying, this is not a comedy club, and uh, I couldn't resist yeah. sometimes. But, but most of all, I, I did my job, okay. but I made it entertaining. It's kind of, you don't lose your sense of humor. No, you, do, you do not lose your sense of humor. I, I was, when I was watching your, your videos, I'm like, there's no way. This guy was an attorney. There's no way. But and it's it, a good training, though. I mean, oh, I mean, how? well, first of all, you're in front of people. Well, when a judge yells at you in front of a crowded courtroom or in front of a jury, no heckler is going to bother you. I mean, okay. it, it, it can't be worse than a judge yelling at you and making you feel this big. Oh, okay. Um, you, you have to think on your feet. Mm -hmm. You have to be prepared. It gives you, you just the training as a lawyer uh, prepares you to be organized. Uh, to be to be prepared, to be uh, um, uh, deliberate and yes. everything, but at the same time, being a trial attorney, uh, by doing trials, you have to. If something goes wrong in a trial or something, there's a twist. You have to be able to think on your feet. Yeah. You have to be able to present yourself to a jury and and have some kind of keep their interest, mm -hmm. make it a little personable and and things. So there's a lot of ways that it's 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 good training. Wow. So let's talk about your new book. Well, okay. your first book, the book about the stories. That stories you share. I tell, yes. Yeah. What, what inspired that? I'll tell you. I have um, I released three CDs that are professionally recorded. Uh, they're all about 50, 55 minutes long, and each one is totally different than the other. So there's almost about three hours of material. I have two DVDs. Uh, that were recorded. Half of each are not on the CD. So I had a lot of material, but I even had more material on my computer. Stories I had written down, little things that remind me. It's, it's wonderful material that I wasn't able to share with people. And I said, what a waste. And so I put to, I started making a compilation of stories in a book called Stories I Tell. Just short, funny stories. In fact, I you know, people say I take it on vacation and I, I read it in three days because it was short and it was funny. I tell people, leave it in the bathroom. I said, read one story at a time. If you had a bad burrito, you could read three stories. I said, but it's all quick and funny stories. So um, the first book did so well, it won um, like four international awards and gold medals and, and things that I still had stories left over. And I did a second book called More Stories I Tell. Mm -hmm just won a fifth uh, international award. Won, it was a winner in the Book Excellence Award. It won a, 
um, the cat, the humor category, and that, and that's an international, like, all over the world. So you make a lot of people laugh. They laugh so hard that it, it, you know it's painful. So who makes you laugh that much? Is it hard to find somebody who can have the same effect on you? Yeah, my family makes me laugh. Uh, friends, uh, <laughs> they, they uh, my, <laughs> do you find that funny? <laughs> Where do you think I get the sense of humor from my family? <laughs> oh my God, around the table, oh my God. No, you listen, you think we're the biggest enemies in the world because everybody's, you know, busting them on each other and stuff like that. But that's trained you to respond. <laughs> I'm tired of political correctness. It's out of hand. Uh, here's the, what's the big issue with political correctness now? You know what it is? The NFL team, the Washington Redskins. We need to change, change the name of the Redskins. It's derogatory, it's stereotypical, it's racist. Listen, I don't care if they change the name of the Redskins, but don't do it because it's politically correct. Do it because it doesn't fit the team. The team is from Washington, D.C. There were no Redskins in Washington, D.C. Right, there were no, no teepees on the National Mall, there's no Warriors, there's no Chiefs, there's no Indians. Who lives in Washington, D.C.? The President, Congress, all the federal agencies, the IRS, the Department of This, the Bureau of That. That's the team they should call the Steelers. <laughs> well, you know, every team's name will be under attack eventually. The atheists will be protesting the angels and the saints. We don't believe in angels. People with bad credit will be suing the bills and the charges. <laughs> They're mocking my bad credit rating. The gays will be going, what about the Flames and the Packers? <laughs> well, so let's move to another segment. Sure. My favorite, What's the that? memes. Memes. Okay. 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 You posted a lot of memes, and they these things. Are oh, fun. we get a lot more too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. A bunch in the in the pipeline. Yeah. Oh. So I have a few here. Okay. Quite a few that I, um, thanks to Facebook, I was able to grab. Okay. This many memes. So how about this? You get to read your memes. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! This is this is a, this is one that's actually a, a joke in my eye. Now it's fall; it's appropriate. Everything's pumpkin. Have you noticed that? So I go out to breakfast. Uh, one day I got a, a pumpkin coffee with a pumpkin muffin. Then I got pumpkin pancakes. They even had pumpkin syrup. And that same night, I go out to dinner. I got pumpkin raviolis. Wash them down with a pumpkin beer. For dessert, I got a piece of pumpkin pie. I top it off with a spiced pumpkin latte. The next day I woke up, my head was orange, three of my front teeth were missing. I go, what the hell? So it's, it's just a, a play on the pumpkin. That's another one. <laughs> I can't say this one. No, oh, why do you think you cannot <laughs> say that one? I says that I thought when there was a time in my life, I thought a juggernaut was an astronaut with big boobs. Mm -hmm. I big boobs. <laughs> no, <laughs> a juggernaut. I, no, let's read it. There was, <laughs> there was actually a time in my life where I thought that a juggernaut was an astronaut with big tits. But I can't, I can't say it. Can you say that? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, God, my people oh. are dying. They were dying. Okay. Oh, here's one about Hillary. Mm -hmm. That she's in big trouble. Mm -hmm. And I feel bad for her about the same as I felt bad when I found out Jeffrey Dahmer got killed in prison. So, <laughs> not that much. So, let's see. <laughs> Oh, you like the political ones, huh? Uh, no, I mean, th I, I just, listen, I printed every single, I oh. tried to print as many as possible. This is about, I got the athlete's foot. So I go to the store, I get the foot powder, I take my shoe and my sock off, and I read the direction that says, apply liberally. So I just put it on my sh foot and said, this is all George Bush's fault. So, just to play on words. <laughs> so, yeah, so, yeah. So that just gives a, you a, a taste of those. And these are just few ideas. Yeah, it's all... From up here, yeah. Now, okay, so the way you promote your book, it's very, very unique. And this is all your original ideas, right? Yep. You grab photos of famous people, you know, famous characters on TV. These are real people. These are, These are real people. Well, I, I did have a celebrity, a celebrity uh, real celebrities, reading my book. I was doing a... I, I had members of, the, members of the Red Sox, the Patriots. Oh, Things like that, reading my book, and yes. I would put a little bio of them and, and have them, a picture of them laughing, reading my book, I, and I started to run out. So next thing you know, I had... Uh, <laughs> SpongeBob reading your book, right? SpongeBob. Okay. Oh, Tom Brady. Tom Brady was reading my book. Oh! oh we had, we've had uh, Fred Flintstone. 
Yeah, Muhammad Batman. Ali. Yes. Batman. Mm -hmm. um, the Queen of England. The Queen of England. Moses had both of my books. <laughs> like the, the Ten, the ten, ten Commandments and, and, and your book. He had, yeah, yeah, he had the two books, Moses, uh, Michael Jackson, Oprah, all the celebrities. Yeah, they've all, they love my book. Yes. And they don't you, know it, but they you, love yeah, my book. You put it on, on Facebook, who is reading my book? So, oh, somebody said, you could get in trouble for doing that. I said, wait, 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 I'll get publicity. I mean, I you're said, a lawyer. You, you're prepared for this, right? <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. I said, I need, I, need the, I need the publicity. What the hell? So I would if, love if Oprah if to come after me. If it made the handcuffs, it's just like... Yes. I go, read the book. <laughs> They'll be taken away. Read the book. It's funny. <laughs> Winter's coming. Some people like the winter because they get to do things like, like go snow skiing. My friends took me snow skiing once up in the mountains. And I don't, I don't know why people say, oh, it's not cold and windy enough here. Let's drive three hours north <laughs> where it sucks even more. And the night before, I didn't know anything about skiing. I knew nothing, but I said, I'll give it a shot, right? The night before, we're getting shit-faced in the lodge. I'm going, I love skiing so far. This is great. I love it. Next day, 7 a.m., Paul, wake up. What? Wake up. Hurry up. We're going to be late. Late for what? Going to be late for skiing. I said, what time is it? 7 a.m. I said, it's a mountain. It'll be there at 1030. I get on my knees every night and thank God I'm not working as a lawyer. I like what I do. I'm so happy that I can make people laugh. I've given my, you know, you say about making people laugh. That's a wonderful thing, and I, and I'm, and I appreciate it. I'm thankful. I'm just very fortunate to be good at what I do, but every time I work with a comedian and I try to help them out, every one of them says, I didn't realize how hard you work at what you do. I said, if you want to yeah. be good at anything, if you're an athlete, you're a musician, you're a TV How does a comedian's schedule look like? like? How do you prepare? Well, my day, my day, I'm, I'm very big. People think I work 45 minutes a, a, a day, and that's it. You know, at night, you're headlining a show. Well, but all day long, um, we're posting things on social media, trying to get the word out there, uh, editing videos, uh, writing new material, developing material, writing a book, uh, writing my next book, uh, and things. So um, there's always something, always something we're working on. Do yeah. you ever get um, a, a mind block? Like you can't, there's well, not, no new materials coming in? Creativity comes and goes. Okay. So sometimes you can't sometimes force yourself to be creative, but when it's, when it's flowing, you can write down everything you can. And then when you have a block, go back over those things that you had ideas and see if you can develop them. So I, that's why I tell comedians. I say, if you can't come up with any new ideas, go back over the old ideas. May I see the books, please? Oh, sure. Sure. These, you, these are for you. These are my gifts to oh, you. Oh, my goodness. Yes. I've never... Wow. I should have more guests such as yourself. Sure. Bringing in gifts. Sure, when we have my CDs, my DVD, we got everything. We got the whole so, catalog for you here. So um, the, I got my own. Is, is, this uh, is um, their series, right? Stories I tell and more stories to tell. Right. So the third book is going to be. Uh, the third book, I think, when I moved to Los Angeles, I was miserable, and um, I didn't go through that at the beginning of my career. So I had to go through it after I had been doing comedy for a while and moved to Los Angeles. And uh, the struggle that I went through there, the same way, I started writing a diary. Because mm. I regret it. I never wrote a diary when I was a, a, a prosecutor because I, a lot of the stories are lost. And I call it L.A. Miserable, like the L.A., like Les Miserables series. And I, had, I said, I'll write a book, and as soon as I hit it big, I'll be a big star. I'll have the story of how I became a big star. Well, six books later, 300 pages apiece, I got these diaries every day, and it forced me to write. Mm. And I became a better writer, and I also have these great stories. And my friends read the first one, the first L.A. Miserable uh, book, and they said, you gotta, you got to publish this. This is hilarious. You're so miserable. It's, it's funny because I'm venting. And so I'm, I'm going through the editing of that now, and I think I'm going to release that as a book. Next. L.A. Miserable. Yeah, L.A. Miserable. I cannot wait. So it's Stories I Tell was the first one. Right. More Stories to Tell and L.A. Miserable. Uh, that'll be out, who knows? Who knows? Uh, yeah. But just and you can get them on my eye website, oh, okay. pdangelo.com, or you can go on um, Amazon. Those are on the Amazon. And, of course, you got to do the memes. Oh, the meme? Oh, I could do a meme book. Yeah, you gave me a new idea. No, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm waiting book. for that check once that idea goes big. Yes, uh, keep, <laughs> keep waiting. <laughs> and, of course, you have your DVDs. Yes, uh, these are DVDs. These are videos. Uh, both of these are uh, like an hour long. <laughs> this is actually, if you can see this. Yes, yeah, the court jester. That's my friend Doogie, who's the judge. 
I'm getting yelled at like I did many times in court, but he's, uh, he was perfect for that role. And uh, my latest uh, DVD was uh, live at the Larkham Theater, which is a beautiful theater in uh, Beverly, Massachusetts. Mm. Um, okay. And uh, we recorded that uh, uh, about a year and a half ago. I have uh, the three CDs, mm. Welcome to Suck World, which <laughs> is the adult Disneyland where you take kids to show them what life is really like when they grow up, and <laughs> it's not too pretty. <laughs> and then there's... Um, Santa Wants a Scotch. Santa Wants a Scotch. Half of that is about winter and how... It is miserable coping with winter, and a lot of people find that uh, fun to listen to in the winter time. And the other half is about relationships. Full dumpster is about your head. Your head, when you're born and you're a baby, and you're stupid. Your head is empty, and every day you're alive, people throw their crap inside your dumpster, and it fills up with all the crap. And by the time you become an adult, every, you're miserable. So uh, that's all about how becoming an adult and and gaining responsibility and and experience and maturity just makes you very cynical about the world. So a lot of people can relate to that. So we can find all of these, your books, your DVDs, and these um, CDs all online? On, on, my, on my website. On my website, the CDs you, and DVDs you can buy at CD Baby, which is, uh, they, they, they have them there. You can buy them digitally or, or um, the physical mm -hmm. one. You can buy them at my shows, and I sign them at my shows and personalize them and get to meet a lot of people that way, and that's nice. Wow. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Thank my pleasure. Thank you for being in our studios. Thank you for making us laugh. Thank you for inviting um, me. I cannot wait to come to your next upcoming show. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. And of course, once again, we had Paul in our studios. Very, very funny guy. Um, you can go to his website and you can get to buy his DVDs, his CDs, and also his books. Um, I will really recommend for you to visit that website. So with that, I say have a wonderful day. Bye.